Okay, welcome back to Kenosha Community Media. We got a great guest uh, this afternoon, and it's uh, Jim Horwood, and he's a board member uh, for the Alliance for Community Media. Jim, thank you so much for talking with us today. Uh, uh, glad to do it. So uh, maybe for those who uh, don't know about the Alliance for Community Media, what is the Alliance for Community Media? It's kind of what uh, the title says. It's an organization uh, to promote uh, community access on uh, cable television and other, uh, other platforms. It used to be called the uh, National Federation of Local Cable Programmers and uh, somewhat gone beyond just cable and general community media over uh, basically over video. And how did you get involved with the Alliance for Community Media? I was invited to speak at the conference in 1984 in, in Denver, and uh, I've been to every conference uh, since then. I was asked to serve on the board in 1990, so I've been on the board for uh, 30 years now. Wow, well, congratulations. We thank you. In fact, when I went to the first ones, uh, uh, back I think it was in the late 90s, there was one in Milwaukee, it was a great experience, but probably the best panel I went to was Ask the Lawyers. And it just for those who haven't been to it, it's an excellent one for to learn about what's going on. And maybe for those who don't know about the Ask the Lawyers panel, it's always a, a standard one at the Alliance. Uh, what is the Ask, Ask the Lawyers panel? Uh, usually have uh, three lawyers on a panel and uh, ask whatever questions people have. It's kind of not structured, and uh, we you know, try to answer the questions and try try to give good answers. At least we hope they're good answers. Peg Access always has a lot of threats and challenges over the years. Is there anything currently that we should be aware of? Um, sure, the efforts by uh, cable industry to eliminate uh, Peg Access, and we've seen that. Uh, Kind of heightened in the last few years as the industry has become somewhat emboldened. They've got a uh, FCC that is uh, industry friendly and not consumer friendly, uh, or the majority of it uh, is. Or of the five commissioners, uh, two uh, I think are responsive to our interests and uh, care about them, and the other three uh, much less so. And a lot of what we're seeing now is uh, claims that uh, peg access is irrelevant because you can get uh, video delivered uh, over other other platforms and it doesn't have to be delivered over uh, peg, it delivered over satellite, but that's no longer uh, a really viable argument for them. But And that's part of the challenge we have is to say why that's uh, wholly inadequate uh, you know, one it doesn't give you the kind of programming that people go to to see what's going on in the community. But more significantly, uh, there are communities that uh, aren't reached by, uh, by by the broadband and the internet. Uh, you know, you know, we take it as a given. Uh, it's not true for many of the uh, under-resourced uh, communities. So. Uh, this is the way people can get information. And uh, as somebody old and a senior, I tend to uh, find it a lot easier to change and you know, switch the dial on the television set. So what can we do as a community to help save public access and keep it going into the future? You know, stay active with organizations like the Alliance for Community Media, like uh, in your case, the Wisconsin organization, the one that Mary Cardona runs, and yeah. uh, gives you a chance to uh, be active politically, uh, be be responsive to fundraising uh, efforts by uh, these organizations. Because you, you need money to be able to fight the good fight. We are now heavily involved in the case. Uh, before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit, in which the FCC has uh, come out with a ruling uh, saying that a lot of the requirements for PEG access, uh, in fact, ought to be monetized, and 
deducted from the franchise fee, which under the Cable Act, the franchising authority is able to require a franchise fee of uh, up to 5% of gross revenues from providing cable service. The FCC now has taken the position that uh, non-monetary payments uh, in kind services uh, count against that uh, five percent which can have a big effect in some places and there's also a suggestion uh, which they did not do this time but that we'll be looking at it soon of uh, saying the value of the franchise itself counts against the franchise fee so you, you monetize that and deduct that from the five percent which is totally contrary to the way cable franchising has operated uh, say since the 1984 Cable Act, but, which is when there was first federal regulation of cable, but even before that, uh, peg access was required and there was, was never thought that the value of the channel would be uh, charged back to the subscriber. Well, once again, Jim, I just want to thank you for talking with us today. You're just a, a fighter for us on the front line, especially for the First Amendment. And we thank you so much for your participation with Alliance for Community Media. And thank you so much for talking with us today. Oh, glad to. Thank you.